www.trevordykes.com. The family of Trevor Dykes has been waiting years for everyone who's allegedly in connection with his murder to appear in court. But in those years, there's been something going on behind the scenes that's been providing some sort of therapy for the family. Coming up, I'll tell you exactly what that is. A mudslide caused delays on US 460. Coming up, I'm Marianne Fletcher in Pike County, and I'll tell you how it happened. An incoming system this weekend could provide a wintry mix for parts of the mountains. We'll have the full details coming up now at 6. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A trial date nearly five years after the crime. We learned that Thomas Miracle and Ashley Lawson will appear in court in April of 2020. They are accused of hiring Roscoe Henson back in July of 2015 to murder Trevor Dykes. Henson already pleaded guilty to murder, but Trevor's mother and father say they just want this to all finally be over with. But in the almost four years since the crime, the family has been doing something else to help them heal. WYMT's Connor James has been. A solemn morning in Clay County. The wind howling as Trevor Dykes' parents approach another year without their son. With each calendar day that passes, still his murder, they cannot wrap their heads around. Our lives never be normal. A trial date finally set Monday for the two people prosecutors say hired his killer. It should have never happened. He was a good boy. He worked every day, loved his kids, loved his family. It's been nearly four years since a man carelessly took Trevor's life. His mother's and father's patience is running out. It's just, it's not fair. But as we talked about Trevor's life, you could not help but notice their demeanor change from sadness to happiness. A drive down a hauler and a walk to a spot sitting peacefully under the pines sits the memory and legacy Trevor left behind, his love for cars carrying a new meaning. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to complete them. I mean, it's taking a little bit, but a little bit at a time, you know. As the family waits day after tireless day for years to see justice, Trevor's dad and some buddies have been fixing up Trevor's old cars. I had the hood change. Uh, all the insides are going to go. I'm having all them put gray and black. Trevor had quite the collection of Mustangs sitting around his place. He absolutely loved them. Oh, that's what he loved. You know, that's his car, man. I wouldn't take nothing in the world for it. Now, as each day goes by, as the family awaits trial, this is something to distract them. Yeah, it, it really does. Uh... Something to ease their minds. The family has a little saying, Trevor will forever be banging gears. It's really... I'm really going to do it for him. This is just a simple way to help push that legacy along. Because he wanted a street car. Yeah. In Clay County, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. You can find our coverage of the case for the past three and a half years on WYMT.com. Deputies in Laurel County say a man used a fire extinguisher to assault a woman. They arrested Nathan Lewis Hale early this morning. Deputies say he first fired a rifle at her multiple times. They then say he took the fire extinguisher, sprayed her with it, and also used it to hit her in the back and side. Also at the home, police say they found drugs. He faces assault and drug charges. Now to a story we first told you about yesterday. We have tried to gather more information on an IED found in Harlan County. Officials told us they found it near the sewer plant in Everts. We called officials today to see what new information they could release and were told they hope to release more either tonight or tomorrow. They do not believe it was as dangerous as they first thought. A fire in the Combs community of Perry County destroyed a home this afternoon. This is video of the flames. No one was inside the home. It's unclear what caused that fire. A rock slide on US 460 in Pike County slowed not only vehicle traffic, but foot traffic as well. Local business owners saw a decrease as appointments were rescheduled and canceled. WIMT's Marianne Fletcher talked to one salon owner about how it affected her business. A rock slide on 460 in Pike County stopped traffic for more than three hours on Wednesday. I expect uh, probably late tonight before we actually get both lanes open. 
Highway Superintendent Josh Blackburn says recent rainfall mixed with cold and warm temperatures caused the slide. It's it's really just the freeze and thaw that that gives us most of our trouble with the rock falls. Just down the road, local businesses like Silver Shears are hurt by the slide. And the rock slide happened like right here to where I get at work. So Melinda Kilgore says her usual 15 minute commute turned into a 25 minute drive. It's a little bit of inconvenience for me and my clients because we both have to reschedule. It also slowed down foot traffic in and out of her shop. It slowed some of the walk-ins down today, like other days would be really busy. Blackburn says it's not easy to clean up slides like this. We had to bust up the bigger rocks with this excavator behind us. Um, then we will load them out and haul them away. However, they're working to clear the road as soon as possible. And Melinda is thankful. I'm glad the guys are out there cleaning everything up so nobody will get hurt on the road and stuff. And it's really cold out. Cleaning up a big mess. In Pike County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Officials again say both lanes should be open around midnight tonight. Of course, we'll let you know. Now, we could see more rain heading into this weekend, along with a little snow, too. Chief Meteorologist Andrew Dockery is keeping an eye on this tricky system. Andrew? Yeah, Steve, you said it fast, that it's tricky, and it will continue to be tricky over the next 48 to 72 hours. And the really big story uh, that's different from the previous systems, colder air is already going to be in place, and that really starts as we head into tonight. Let's take a look at some of the cameras, and we'll show you clouds racing through through some areas, a little bit more cloud cover uh, compared to others. If you're in the Cumberland Valley, you've been under mostly sunny skies and you can really see where some of the light flurries are impacting portions to the north northeast. Uh, we're not going to be looking at any problems regarding snow tonight or even for your Thursday, Friday, but the cold temperatures going to be the big story. And this is where we talk about uh, those temperatures in the 30s already across Hazard, Lexington, Louisville, even Paducah and Clarksville. And Look at the northwest winds really crank again, something we're going to be seeing even as we headed to the forecast for tomorrow for your Friday and temperatures not going to get over 40 degrees at least for a good chunk of Eastern Kentucky for the next uh, couple of days here. Tonight's lows, we drop down to the teens. Clear skies mean cooler temperatures as you work up to the northeast. You'll look at slightly warmer temperatures tonight as the cloud cover sticks around with some partly cloudy skies. And that's system number one. In fact, we say system number one because this sets up the big talk. Uh, well, the clouds arrive late Friday and then the snow kicks in, Steve, as we head into your Saturday morning because once again, the cold air is already in place. The bad news for snow lovers, warm air follows quickly behind that. And how quick is it going to take or how long will it take for that rain to quickly fall? Well, we'll have to uh, answer that coming up in a few short minutes. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Nearly three weeks into the partial government shutdown, tensions remain high between President Trump and Congress. And following a meeting today between President Trump, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, no end is in sight. Garrett Weimer talked to a Kentucky family waiting for an answer from D.C. For Lori Markham, day 19 of the government shutdown is a lot like the others. Working. Waiting and worrying. We're having to prioritize and say, okay, you know, what's more important here, my kid eating or keeping the electric on? For Markham, it's a double whammy. Her husband is a federal corrections officer, still working but not expecting a paycheck Friday. Markham is a realtor. She doesn't work for the government, but she says she hasn't been able to close any sales during the shutdown. That's because many buyers need tax transcripts for mortgage loans, something they haven't been able to get from the IRS. I do have one all-cash deal that's set to close on Thursday. It's very small, so whatever money commission I get from that is the money that we're going to have to live on until we can. And that's the thing. After watching speeches by President Trump and Democratic leaders, Markham and many others still don't know when it will end. Markham says she voted for Donald Trump and while she wants to see the border secured and a wall built, she says the shutdown needs to end. I feel like he should have actually, you know, found another way to get the money for the wall and not have to negotiate our livelihoods. Markham says she feels like their livelihoods are being held hostage. 
Garrett Weimer, WYMT Mountain News. The industry website Housing Wire reports that the IRS says they'll resume processing requests for tax transcripts after getting strong pushback from trade groups. But they say it will take some time to get back up to speed because of a nearly three-week backlog. While we hear about more and more struggles caused by this shutdown, today we learned about a group of furloughed workers making even bigger sacrifices. In Paintsville, they need your help in raising money for a co-worker diagnosed with cancer. WIMT's Justin Case is live with more. Justin. Steve, a special event to raise money for a prison worker who right now is battling cancer. Now, this concert is going to happen right here behind me in downtown Paintsville at the SIP Theater on Saturday. Now, we are told that Dustin Chico was diagnosed with cancer a couple of years ago. While he did beat that, a tumor was found pressing up against his aortic artery last year. Now, organizers are his friends from the prison over in Martin County. They say they're trying to organize this to try to raise money for Dustin and his family while he continues this fight against cancer. Organizers say all the money raised from the concert will be used for Dustin's medical bills or for electric bills, just home bills, or just whatever money the family needs while he continues this fight. And they, everyone I've talked to so far describes Dustin Chico as just two words, good man. There's not words for the kind of man he is. You know, he's, he's, a God-fearing man, He's, he cares about his family more than anything, you know, and, and more than anything is his faith through what he's going through. Most people aren't going to be that way, but he's positive all the time. He's positive. Steve, so there are a total of six bands that we know of that are going to be here at Sat on Saturday, starting at 7 p.m. at the SIP Theater in downtown Paintsville. Just to name a few of them, we have Black Powder Express, Sons of FM, and Uplifters. We're going to have more information about Dustin and the concert tonight at 11. Steve. All right, Justin, thank you very much. The Appalachian College of Pharmacy and the University of Pikeville signed a memorandum of agreement this morning. This means students will be able to earn a Master of Business Administration while completing their Doctor of Pharmacy degree. The program offers classes year-round. Students are able to enroll in both programs right now as the spring semester begins. The father of a University of Kentucky student who fell from a fourth floor balcony gives an update on his son's condition. Representative Chris Harris of Pike County thanked everyone on the House floor today for their support. His son Corbin has spent the last three months in a recovery facility. Corbin suffered a traumatic brain injury after falling from the apartment balcony in August. Uh, my family and I want to thank everyone for your prayers and concerns. So many people, members, of this body, uh, folks that work here in Frankfurt and people from home, folks that I've met through my work in county government and now in state government, uh, Democrats and Republicans alike, um, all have shown my family great kindness uh, in so many ways. Uh, there has been no partisan divide in that, uh, in that showing of, of compassion, Mr. Speaker. Representative Harris says he remains hopeful his son will be able to come to the chamber one day to thank everyone for their support. Kentucky lawmakers have introduced several bills today on the second day of the 2019 General Assembly. In the House, two Republican representatives filed a bill that would make medical marijuana legal in Kentucky. That includes a Republican state senator who said he smoked a joint when he was diagnosed with cancer seven years ago. The senator said... Quote, when I left the hospital, they gave me that nice bottle of Oxycontin. I threw it in the garbage can and went home and smoked a joint. And guess what? No nausea. Also in Pikeville, officials plan to hold a moment of silence for Officer Scotty Hamilton on Friday. It's scheduled for Friday at 1.11 p.m. It will be held in front of the Pikeville Police Department. 1.11 was Officer Hamilton's badge number. He died in the line of duty last March. A man's livelihood gone, stolen while being treated following a crash. Just ahead, Will Puckett tells us more about the investigation. Snow to rain, rain to snow, we don't know the answer yet, but we'll tell you what we do know coming up with this winter system.